So we're away from the city resort mega complex of Puerto Vallarta and we're heading into the Sierra Madre Mountains to a little colonial town called Mascota. And Merdad is going to explain to is going to explain to us what the original name of Mascota was and is. Ah uh, yes, uh, Mascota seems to be named the pets because in Spanish when you say Mascota means the pets, but this Mascota its origin from Amaxcotlan, Madagotlan is the original name Mascota, the ancient uh, culture who used to live there uh, this, it is, has this name for this pueblito that means the land of uh, deer and snake and it's uh, translated to mascota for to the Spanish so this is a um, ancient culture to live there the name of this tribe is Takeo the tribe who extinct now there no exist anymore this culture. Yeah, it's the origin of name of the mascot. Okay, so as he said, the original name means the land of the deers and snakes. So supposedly there is a little museum there, or we know there is a museum there that has pre-Hispanic artifacts but the big question of the day is will it be open or not we're going to go to the tourism office there and see if we can get more information about the pre-Hispanic aspects of this little town as well as drive through and look at the colonial structures as well so stay tuned so we're slowly crawling up into the Sierra Madre Mountains. Before this we were going kind of up and down and up and down and now we're doing an actual major ascent. This is the same road that took us to a little town of Pueblita in a previous video called San Sebastian de Oeste. And going farther to a companion town, I think of the same vintage as we previously discussed, called Mascota. So please enjoy the ride as we go into this high jungly area here in June of 2020.
we drove way up into the mountains and then did quite a descent and we are now at the outskirts of our destination. the little town of Mascota. So we'll see what it's like as compared to the other little colonial town that we explored uh, in the recent past. You can see lots of uh, agriculture in this area. Entering into the little town of Mascota with the standard cobblestone street, streets, which are hellish on a little car like this that doesn't have much of a suspension. So it's five kilometers an hour, and we're heading towards the center where the museum is. We'll see if it's open or not and Tourist Information Center as well. So, once again, we're basically in the core of this little town of Mascota. Very colonial looking. And there is a museum here that supposedly was closed, but now we find the doors open. So we're going to look at all of the artifacts here. Supposedly there's a connection with Peru. But how that can be, I have no idea, but that's what we're going to be exploring. Standard anthropomorphic petroglyphs. some ceramics. Somewhat similar to styles we see in <coughs> Peru and of course in different areas of Mexico. So the museum consists of four rooms. This is the room of the um, petroglyphs. So pretty well the standard shapes we can see at uh, petroglyph sites all over the world. Circles, human faces, possibly the sun symbol, uh, looks like a lizard, the magical human form. Spirals. Lots of spiral shapes, which of course you see in many locations around the world. A circle within a circle. Possibly mythical beings. Mm -hmm. 
an H with humanoid figures. Lizards. Looks like they obviously took chalk in order to allow you to see the designs um, much easier. So where exactly these are located, I don't know, but... Supposedly in this general area. Again, lizard designs. So, we're very thankful that the museum was specially open for us. Uh, Murdad, our guide, <coughs> told the lady in charge that um, I'm a visiting dignitary from Peru. He explained to her that I'm an author and video maker, so that's why I was allowed to come inside and document um, these petroglyphs. Of course you find shapes like this or petroglyphs like this all over the world, um, especially the human figures, representations of uh, the sun, lizards and serpents, and things of that nature. And their symbol here seems to be a man with a horn of some kind. That seems to be the symbol for the museum. Now we're in the ceramic section. And stones. So basic implements of stone. A lot of arrowheads made of obsidian. Possible corn grinder of some kind. Human burials. And various ceramics. Again, we read that there was supposed to be some connection between here and ancient Peru, which I have not seen so far. The um, artifacts, especially the ceramics, are kind of typical of what you find in Mexico of different cultures, which we've seen all over the place, and of course, especially <coughs> in the massive an incredibly um, impressive museum <clears throat> of anthropology and archaeology in Mexico City, which I believe is presently closed. I'm going to be going to Mexico City in about 14 days, and hopefully by then the big museum will be open because it's one of the finest in the world, and it's one of the first major museums set up to display all of the major and minor cultures of ancient Mexico. 
I think, uh, based on a chronological timeline. And everything, it seems, pretty well of the collection is on display. So that's where you see the magnificent um, Olmec heads, for example. There are also elongated skulls, um, artifacts from the Aztec, Teotihuacan, Toltec, and Maya and other cultures in Mexico. If you want to see previous videos I've made, I have made a few videos from previous trips to Mexico City um, highlighting the uh, incredible collection of artifacts and the astonishing building in which they are housed. Now we're in the ceramic section and stones. So basic implements of stone. A lot of arrowheads made of obsidian. Possible corn grinder of some kind. Human burials. and various ceramics. Again, we read that there was supposed to be some connection between here and ancient Peru which I have not seen so far. The um, artifacts, especially the ceramics, are kind of typical of what you find in Mexico of different cultures, which we've seen all over the place. And of course, especially <clears throat> in the massive and incredibly um, impressive museum <clears throat> of anthropology, and archaeology in Mexico City, which I believe is presently closed. I'm going to be going to Mexico City in about 14 days, and hopefully by then the big museum will be open because it's one of the finest in the world, and it's one of the first major museums set up to display all of the major and minor cultures of ancient Mexico. I think uh, based on a chronological timeline and everything it seems pretty well of the collection is on display. So that's where you see the magnificent um, Olmec heads for example. There are also elongated skulls, um, artifacts from the Aztec Teotihuacan, Toltec, and Maya and other cultures in Mexico. If you want to see previous videos I've made, I have made a few videos from previous trips to Mexico City um, highlighting the uh, incredible collection of artifacts and the astonishing building in which they are housed. So now we're in room number three and you can see an actual excavation in the area. And here again. Human remains. No elongated skull I can see. And again, ceramics typical of ancient Mexico, 
and other parts of uh, as well what you would see in Central America and to some degree South America. But to me these, uh, these shapes and designs are quite typical of ancient Mexican cultures. Could be little beads made possibly from emerald, and uh, emerald is most commonly found in Ecuador, so that could have been traded through a chain of different cultures from Ecuador to here. Again, I'm not seeing any uh, obvious connection with ancient Peru. But still, we're very grateful that they uh, allowed me to come into this museum because at this point, it seems to be off limits to the general public. More pottery. Here's one of a jaguar. Probably Jaguar human transformation character. Quartz crystal ornaments. And more ceramics. Again, the appearance of what could very well be uh, either emerald or jade ornaments. And so if jade, it could be from Mexico. I think most jade is, tends to be found closer to Mexico City than here. So that would be um, a trading system from there to this area. But if it's emerald, then likely emerald uh, traded from Ecuador. That's where there are large deposits and emeralds were also traded uh, into Peru. The Paracas culture of 3,000 to 2,000 years ago had um, ornaments, uh, jade, or not jade, uh, emerald ornaments, and so those most likely would have come from Ecuador. and likely by sea, or maybe land trade. And some more ancient human skeletal remains. and possibly traveling to a little town called Talpa. But we're unsure of the condition of the road, so we're going to check that out first and make a decision as to whether we proceed towards there or head back to San Sebastian de Oeste to have some lunch. So stay tuned for that. The cobblestone roads continue. We 
which I'm sure is a, a cultural thing of pride or the uh, colonial history, but it's, it's a real pain in the neck when it comes to wear and tear on the little car we're in. So a little tour of the historic center area of Taupa de Allende, high in the Sierra Madres. If you're hoping to see some megalithic stuff, I'm afraid you're out of luck. But of course on my YouTube channel, there are 1,000 plus <coughs> videos dedicated to megalithic sites around the world. So please watch them and share them and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I hope you've enjoyed this little tour up in the mountains, the Sierra Madre Occidental, outside of Puerto Vallarta in ancient Mexico. Okay, actually an unexpected stop probably the last part of this video and that is a uh, obviously what is a church but what's intriguing is there seem to be very large basalt blocks uh, sculpted so we're going to check them out because there's a possibility that this is in fact a megalithic site ancient pre-Columbian. So as we come up to the stonework, like we see in a lot of locations, you have very rough work above and much, much finer work below. And so this is likely a basalt stone and highly unlikely that the early Spanish visitors were capable of cutting so many blocks like this. Each one is a different shape and size, which is consistent with what we see at ancient megalithic sites in different parts of the world. And here it becomes even more obvious. You can see, again, that uh, you have very large hard stone basalt blocks like that and then a reconstruction during the Spanish colonial times. As we look at these ones here, they show signs of possible ancient cataclysmic damage. So there's one other site that we've seen called Mitla, which is in Oaxaca in Mexico. And you can look that up in my list of videos. And what you can tell is that Mitla, again, was an ancient megalithic site and that uh, it was reconstructed during the Zapotec indigenous people's times. So this is a very intriguing location. 
Again, highly unlikely that these were cut by the Spanish because you would need likely a diamond saw and each one seems to be to some degree a different shape and size. So, very good find, Mayor Dad. Great. <laughs> I'll send to you. Yeah, I think we've stumbled across <clears throat> an ancient megalithic site. Yeah? Yeah. Are you sure? Ninety-five percent sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, look how rough the work is on top. That's the Spanish reconstruction. The native people here that we know of were Stone Age, so they wouldn't have had any kind of technology. So, quite a, a curious find here in the Sierra Madre Mountains of Mexico. Unfinished temple, they call it. Well, here you can see where the Spanish were reworking the stone. But with the older big blocks, you don't see any sign of ornamentation or anything like that, which again is consistent with an ancient megalithic site. So we just stumbled across this place, <coughs> driving back to Puerto Vallarta, and quite intriguing. There are other locations in Mexico that show sign of ancient high technology, such as at um, Teotihuacan, Mitla, as I mentioned, and then also um, Uxmal.